Hello guys, I'm Bobsy. So you want to make a player shoot. In this tutorial we're going to do physical bullets, which I think are kind of fun, more cartoonish. So all I'm starting with is just a basic, very basic test scene and just a player controller. Um, but that's not really important how you make the movement or anything. As you can see in my scripts folder, it's everything I have. So first of all, let's just build a physical gun on our player really quickly. So I'm just going to call this gun. I think this is a pretty good gun want the gun up where we can see it. So let's go into scripts and make a new script and I'm just gonna call it player shoot. You can call it whatever. Here we have our script. First of all, we're just gonna delete what we have in here. I don't really like how that is when you start out. I started talking a lot in this part of the video. So just to make it really quickly, I have a header called it initial setup. We have a public transform that is just to know where we want to spawn the bullet. And then we, ha then we have the prefab of the bullet. Then we also have some variables that we later apply to the bullet, which is a float for the bullet speed, a float for the fire rate, a float for the bullet damage, and a bool to choose if we want it to be full auto or not. So let's get into our update loop. And first of all, we got to check if it's full auto or not. But let's start with if it is not full auto. All right, so we will we'll want to check the input.get. Um, if you want to use Unity's input system, which I do, it will do get button down and then from standard it's called fire one. If you don't know where to find this, uh, you got to go into your project settings, into the input system, input manager. And on the axis you'll see we have fire one, which is left control or my mouse zero. Do this if we have get the button down, which means it only happens on the click and not if you hold it. And well, we can pretty much copy paste this up here because it's the same just without the down part. And then now this is if we're holding the button and this is if we're just clicking it. So let's make a new function, which we're just gonna call void shoot, which is what we'll call every time we'll want to shoot. So in here, let's start with just spawning the bullets. So we'll do game object uh, bullet to have a reference for the bullet, and then we'll do instantiate. And we want to instantiate the bullet prefab at, our, at the position of the bullet spawn prefab dot position. And we'll just wanna do quaternion.identity because we just want to have it, its own rotation. Uh, and then something I've also made out here is I've made an object called world object holder and it just has the tag of world object holder. This is basically just so we don't fill the whole uh, hierarchy out here with bullets when we spawn them. They're going to be a child object to this. So I'm just going to do uh, game object dot find game object tag. And I'm going to do world object holder. Like so. Oh, and it's dot transform. There we go. But first of all, we're going to make a bullet. So let's do 3D object sphere. And we're just going to call this bullet. And we wanted this to be a trigger and we want this to have a rigid body on it. And I'm just going to use, uh, don't use gravity for now. Actually, we can use gravity. It's, I guess it's fun. Got to set up the bullet as a prefab. That. Go on to the player. And we're going to attach the player shoot script. And then we've got to attach the bullet to the prefab here. And we also got to set a spawn point. So bullet spawn transform. I'm just going to put it as a child object of the gun here to make sure that it always stays. Let's say we want to spawn it right at the tip of the gun. Uh, we go back to the player and give it this transform as a reference as well. And remember we keep it that it is not auto. Because um, that's why we set up the shoot function. And now every time we click we will spawn the bullet as you can see. Now the bullet obviously is just big white chunky. So let's give it some a uh, little bit of design at least. And I also have a material for the bullet which is just a red color. Uh, so now that is fixed. Now the uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want to apply a forward motion to the bullet when we spawn it. So it's actually, you know, shot forward as we want to. So what we can do is we can now reference the bullet and say get component and we'll get the rigid body component. And we'll do add force. Um, and in here we got to uh, take the uh, the transform that the bullet spawned from, it can also be um, from the gun if you would rather do that. But since we already have the bullet spawn transform, that, uh, that forward. Uh, and we'll times that with the bullet speed that we set up as a variable. And then it is really important that since it's got to act like a bullet, we've got to do force mode impulse. The reason for this is the normal way that uh, Unity adds force if we do not write force mode impulse is it will add it slowly over time. Um, but with force mode impulse, it means that we want it to be added as an explosive force, such as a gun or such as a jump or something like that. Should be an immediate force. So now let's set up the bullet speed. Let's do something like five. Uh, and now you should be able to see that the bullet will be shot out ahead of the player like so. So that's a cute little thing. Right now you can shoot as fast as we want as well. Uh, so let's do something about that. So in order to keep track of the time between shots, 
uh, we want to make just a private float. That's a timer. This is the part that keeps track of time. Now, the way that we'll be, we will we'll constantly want to count down this time. Or if the timer is above zero, it should be counting back down to zero. So if we just say timer is greater than zero, uh, in which case it, we should say timer minus equals to time dot delta time. Now, but like this, it will count down at a certain speed. It will count down at one every second. But we want to divide this with our fire rate to be able to set up. Uh, so, for example, if the fire rate is uh, one half, it will mean we'll shoot every two seconds. If it is two, we'll shoot two times in a second. If the fire rate is five, we'll shoot five times a second. And so now we've got to use the timer, right? So first of all, every time that we shoot, we also want to reset the timer. So we've got to say timer equals to one. You'll always want to do this because the fire rate timer equals to one is correct because the fire rate will just always determine how many times every second. And that's why we set this to one to make sure it goes back to being one second. And now we also just got to add another statement here and also check for if the timer is less than or equals to zero, we can shoot again. And we've got to do the same up here. And now we can also add the shoot function to in here. And now it actually basically just works how you want it to as, as a good start at least. So now we can set the fire rate. Let's say we want to shoot one time every second. And let's say that we uh, actually no, let's just keep it disabled. Hold on now. So you can see if I just try and, and go in and I just spam the mouse now, you can see it only shoots one every, once every second. Now, if I put it to auto mode, I can hold the mouse and it will keep shooting once every second. This also means that we can put it down to like 0.1 and I can shoot, you know, full order like this if, we, if that's the effect that we want. Now, notice how all of the bullets that we're spawning are staying in the game. We don't want that. We also we want them to be able to be destroyed somehow, and we also want to pass in the uh, the damage uh, that we set up up here. So for this, we want to keep track of the bullets in their own script. So let's make a new script, and let's just call this bullet. You can call it bullet controller or whatever you want to do, and let's just uh, add this to the bullet, and let's open this up. So inside of the bullet script, once again, I'll delete this, and let's uh, figure out the ones that we want to keep track of. So we want to keep track of the damage. And we also want it to be able to be despawned after a while. And I'm just going to call this lifetime. So this is basically a timer saying if it stays alive, let's say, for example, if you shoot a bullet out of the map, you don't want it to stay alive forever. You want it to be removed at a certain point. So let's do that one first. All we basically got to do is we're going to do a lifetime minus equals uh, time dot delta time, which means it's basically just going to count down once every second. So if lifetime is set to two, for example, which we can do, uh, it will be destroyed after two seconds or three after three seconds and so on and so forth. Um, and then in here we can also do if lifetime goes less than zero. Uh, we can do destroy game objects. Uh, and then let's also do an on trigger enter. Since we set the uh, collision detection to be a trigger, we can do this to, uh, to basically say that if it hits anything, we're going to say destroy game object. Now with this, you're gonna notice an issue. And actually also let's just set a damage just so we can do that for the future. But now you'll notice something if I try and shoot. I'm currently holding my mouse down and you can see it sort of blinks in, blinks out. Now this is because uh, immediately when the bullet spawns, it triggers because it hits the gun's collider. And there's a couple of ways that we can avoid this. We can remove the collider from the gun, obviously that would technically work. We could move the spawn area ahead of the gun. That would technically also work so the bullet doesn't touch the gun when it spawns. But the proper way I would say of doing this is through layers. Layers actually have um, some level of physics added to them that you can adjust. So you can see in this case, I've made a new layer, which you just do by clicking add layer. And I've just made a player layer and a bullet layer. And so I went onto the player, I chose player and said, just yes, do this for all children. So you can see every object on the player is layered with player. Now, if we go into our bullet and we say bullet, now it's the bullet layer. Then if you go to edit and go to your project settings, you can go to physics. And if you scroll all the way down, you'll see this sort of table here. And you can see where bullet meets player. Here, which is right here, I've unticked it, which means that things that are layered with bullet cannot interact with things that are layered with player and vice versa. So you're gonna see if I start the game now, it will all of a sudden work. And you can also see that the bullet will be destroyed when it hits something, uh, which means that we're not gonna be able to have unlimited bullets. Same with the lifetime. You can see if we shoot it out here, it's gonna disappear at some point. Yeah, there you go. You can see from the world object holder out here, can see that they are going to disappear after I think we set it to what three seconds or something. Yeah, but right now we're not passing in the damage variable. We wanted to be able to store the damage as well, which we do in the player shoot script. If we go in here, we can once again, we can reference the bullet and this time we can get the script that we just made, which was called bullet. 
and we can reference the bullet damage and set that equals to the, I made a mistake. I think it was just called damage and we can set that equals to the bullet damage that we set in this script. So we'll reference the damage in here and we'll set that equals to the damage that we set in this script. So now if we go out here, you can see that the damage uh, on the player is currently set to five, I think, yes. So you can see if I start the game now, let me just run over here to the edge and pause the game. So if we go into this bullet, which we just spawned, which is currently falling, but the game is paused, you can see the damage is set to five. And you can see that's, uh, it's two seconds on the lifetime. You can also see that counting down out here. Um, so now we've set the damage and well, basically you've got everything that you need to start doing your own thing now. But let's just say for fun's sake, let's set up a very basic enemy that you want to deal damage to. So let's just make a cube, call it enemy. And we're going to make a new script and we're going to call this, let's just call it enemy just for simplicity. Uh, and we've got to add the script to this enemy. And in here, all we pretty much got to do is we can set a certain amount of health. So we can do a public float health. And then we can do an update function that checks if his health goes below or equals to zero. So if health goes below or equals to zero, it should just destroy the object. So that's basically his whole script. It will just keep track of the health. Now on the bullet, we can actually, before we destroy the game object when it hits something, so this is when the bullet interacts with anything, it hits anything. What we can basically do first is we can make a check if the other, which is the reference on the other, uh, on the enemy in this case, if the other dot get component uh, enemy uh, does not equals to null. This basically means what we're doing now is we're checking does this script exist on whatever we interact with. So this code that we write here, so in this case, we'll do other dot get component enemy uh, health uh, minus equals to the damage that we deal. So this should basically be it. So if we go on to the enemy here and we just make sure he has, let's say 15 health. You can see if we go and shoot him now, you'll see his, uh, his health out here on the right side counting down. So we'll shoot him once, you can see he has 10 health, five health and he's dead. This is basically a whole shooting script. Again, if you don't want the, the bullets to have, uh, for example, gravity, you don't want them to fall down. You want to, let's say you want to shoot uh, much, much faster. Let's do 15, for example. You can see you can also do this. This also works just fine. So I hope this was helpful to you. I tried to go through it quickly so you could just pause the video following along however it works best for you. Um, I'll leave the scripts down in the description or I'll leave a paste into it so you can uh, go to the scripts and, uh, and hopefully this was uh, helpful to you guys. And uh, thank you very much for watching. A like is much appreciated, but not needed. Subscribe is much appreciated, but not needed. And a comment if you have any questions or just like the video, that would be fucking great. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.